Welcome everybody to Dreams Unzipped, where you uncover the beauty of your dreams to discover the truth of who you are. I am Kelly Sullivan Walden, aka Dr. Dream, and I'm thrilled to be with you today because I have the blessing to get to talk to one of my favorite dreamers on the planet, Mr. Robert Haas, Bob Haas, as we like to call him. He's the author of several books, um, Dream Language. He is the former president of the IASD, the International Association for the Study of Dreams. He runs this, the Dream Science Foundation, that's dreamscience.org. He had a radio show. Um, he's been, he's, he was the vice president for global telecommunications at both American Express and IBM. And he is very, he's been featured in all kinds of publications, Reader's Digest, Prevention Magazine, USA Today, PBS. He was featured in Chicken Soup for the Soul, Dreams and Premonitions. And he helped partner with me in bringing in many IASD members into, into that book, which I'm very proud of and excited about. And we're going to talk a little bit about dreams that change lives and but first i just want to welcome to dreams unzipped bob haas welcome thank you i'm glad to be here so good to see you okay so the topic actually ever since i met you several years ago you've talked about you always talk about the spiritual side of dreams and the transformational side of dreams your own and other people whose stories you've been privy to, and now you're putting it in a book. And I know that you have a tremendous amount of passion behind this project and about what you're going to be talking about at the IASD conference coming up this June. So tell me why, first of all, you're so passionate about dreams that change people's lives. Well, th this, is, uh, this is actually an IASD project. Um, many years ago, it, it was began as just a vision uh, what I wanted to do is something actually a little like chicken soup, mm -hmm. uh, where we went out to the general public, and at least to the uh, IASD members and those associated with ISD, uh, and collected dreams that changed their lives. Because there's, there's really no better way mm -hmm. to express the idea that dreams are important than when they actually make a dramatic change in your life. You wake up from a dream and you go, oh my God, what was mm -hmm. all that what about? And, um, and it makes a big change in your life. So we went out um, and collected well over 100 dreams uh, from members and then sort of shut it off and then selected about 100 uh, that we put in this book. And we organized it around um, nine different stages uh, and events in our life beginning from uh, you know, the beginning of our journey through life because we saw these, they're, they're like big dreams. We saw these big dreams as like milestones along our journey. Mm -hmm. And they not only point the way and sort of guide us when we get off the path, um, but they, they also make transformational change along the way. So they're very, very powerful dreams. And the interesting thing is uh, in putting the book together and com organizing it that way, uh, we discovered that dr big dreams don't just happen when you're 30 years old to change your career. Big dreams start when you're first born and they continue throughout your life till the, the moment that you're either losing some loved ones in death or you yourself are passing on and they continue beyond that. So uh, it was an amazing, amazing finding. And what we did was uh, it, we, we found 22 different uh, authors in our organization who are experts in all these stages of dreams in, in, in our, during our lifetimes. Uh, experts in psychic dreams, experts in nightmares. We even found an expert called Kelly Sullivan Walden. What? <laughs> That's ridiculous. Hey, show us the cover while you're while you're talking about the book, so okay, we can see this. Author. Oh, yeah. thank uh, you, Bob. Thank you so much for letting me contribute and be in charge yeah. of one of the one of the chapters that I think is a particularly important one, but it's nice to hear that it's in the context with so oh, many other important oh, themes. Perfect. It was perfect. So hopefully you can see that. That's the... Uh, nope, we can't see it yet. Can't see it yet. Oh, better try again. Let's Double click on that. 
Yeah, this is uh, a little controls here, a little confusing. Hey, today. there we go. There we go. So there All we right. go. All right, great. Seems to change our lives. Mm. And uh, it um, basically what we did is um, organize these uh, not in only in the the nine sections that follow our our journey through life, but uh, with the with the various authors themselves, and so they had a chance. I'm going to go back to you. No, keep it up there. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, it yeah, yeah. Because we well, you can. Yeah, that's. We, we will go with it. Okay. It's the yeah, beauty it of this. It it's nice. So, so much it's better. It's such a pretty. Right. It's such a pretty cover. <laughs> it's gorgeous. It's cosmic. It's colorful. There's going to be some people that are just listening to us, and they're not going to be able to see it. So I'm just going to describe it to those who are listening it to this on the podcast. And if you want to go over to the to my YouTube channel. Kelly Sullivan Walden one. That's the YouTube channel with the number one after it. So it says dreams that change our lives. And there's a, it's a profile shot of a woman, but it looks like she's in the center of an astrological wheel. And there's yeah. all these helixes and all these orbs that are surrounding her. And it, to me, it's a very spiritual looking cover and it's just gorgeous. There's yellows, there's greens, there's blues, there's indigos. And what, so what does it mean to you? Let's do a little, um, I don't know, what is, if it were your dream, what does it, what does it mean to you, Bob? This well, cover? This, the, the thing I really liked, it, it, it's very feminine uh, for one. Mm -hmm. uh, it has the, I don't know if you, the main orb in the center is the moon. <gasps> That's true, right? In and, the center, uh, right. So the the cover has all the various elements of transformation. It's not only only that that moon uh, symbol and the and the beautiful woman's face, but spirals uh, of uh, transformational energy around, and then a mandala. Now the mandala is formed by uh, a zodiac like uh, sign or. Mm -hmm. or uh, spiral around the uh, woman's face, but it, it seemed to have all the elements of the things we tried to capture in the book. So the yeah. spirituality aspect, cosmic, uh, yeah, you know, the cosmic aspect of life-changing dreams, and of course, because I'm a scientist, the uh, book has the scientific aspect and the psychological aspect as well. Mm. So it's got a little bit for everyone. Dreams that change our lives: a publication of the International Association for the Study of Dreams. Okay. Right, and it's and, published by Chiron, uh, who, uh, mainly a union book um, a publisher. And uh, so if you're interested in an early copy, you can go to their website, Chiron Publications, C-H-I-R-O-N. And um, uh, it should be under the new book uh, that are coming out of the coming soon. That's great. And um, I have an order copy. It'll be out in various versions, hard copy, soft copy, and eventually e-copy. Oh, I can't wait to get my copy. And the forewords by Stanley Krippner, who's also Bye. one of our keynote speakers at the IASD conference that yeah. will be coming up soon. And just for those who, I'll just while we're, while we're plugging things for a moment before we get into more of the content here, it's the 34th annual Dream Conference for the International Association for the Study of Dreams. It's at the Wyndham Anaheim Garden Grove Hotel. It's the, in Anaheim, California. Hi. It's June 16th through 20th. And if you're a dream enthusiast, which I imagine you are because you're watching this or listening to this, or you're somebody who's new to dreams, or maybe you're somebody who is an expert in your own right, there are, there's such a diverse kind of group that shows up at these conferences. There's experts in all kinds of, of modalities that relate to dreams. There's scientists, there's psychologists, there's um, shamans, there's, there's creative people, there's musicians, there's, you'll see dreadlocks and didgeridoos walking by, you'll see very scholarly looking people, you'll see young people, old people, multicolored hair, multicolored resumes, yeah. and you will not have one dull moment the entire yeah. time you're there. There's actually about uh, over 50 uh, hardcore researchers there too. For those. <laughs> and Bob, you've been a part of putting this conference together for years and years yeah. and years. So you know, you really know the inside DNA of this. People can go to asdreams.org. That's asdreams.org to yes. register. There's still room if people want to register. Oh, heaven um, yes. Yes, but what's it? What's it like putting these on and getting to really know? You really know the speakers: Gail Delaney, um, Stanley Krippner, um, and Patricia Garfield, will be Patricia Garfield, right? And, and 
and um, Bill Domhoff. Right, and, right. Uh, so we, yeah, we've got some pretty good speakers. Yeah, we've yeah, got yeah. Kelly Sullivan Walden. Oh my God. <laughs> we've got Walter Berry. Oh my goodness. Walter Berry will be there. He's funny. Yeah. Walter Berry is going to be organizing the Dream Ball, and it's going to be the most amazing event that you've ever been to. Jeremy Taylor. Let me not forget Jeremy Taylor. He's amazing. Yeah. And then, oh, yeah. Jeremy will, of course, be joining us. And uh, I didn't. Jeremy's also one of the authors in the book. In fact, all of our, our, our key authors with Inside ASD, all the, for the big sellers are all authors on this book. But what Jeremy chose to do, which is kind of interesting, is rather than writing a chapter, uh, he did his cartoons. He does, does graphic, all, he teaches dreams now by graphic cartoon. And yeah. so the book is filled with his cartoons as well. So, but he'll be also speaking at our conference as one of the keynotes. And Walter Berry is going to be in charge of the dream ball. So you know yes. it's going to be a ball. Walter Berry, who I'll be interviewing very soon on Dreams Un Unzipped. I've interviewed him many, many times. And he's co-hosted with me as, as Bob. Um, Walter Berry is a hoot. He yeah. is, I call him King Dreams a lot. He's crazy and wonderful. And you know it's going to be off the charts. So. And he, he works in the movie industry, so he's bringing all his expertise to make oh this Oh, my goodness. Oh, We're wow. We're also having, um, for those of you in California, this may not be a big thing, but uh, for those of you who are not, or those of you who just don't get out to the beach, we're having a big dream hike. Where we're going to one of the areas that have tide pools um, mm. in about a half hour from Anaheim uh, to the beach area and doing canyon hikes and beach hikes. So uh, we're going to mix it up a little bit. Uh, besides all the dream stuff, we're going to have some fun stuff. Mind, body, and spirit. Okay, so Bob, just to bring people inside the feeling energy and the like, the energy of dreams that change our lives. I'm putting you on the spot here, but. What's one of the dreams that stood out to you in editing this book, co-editing co this book with um, Robert Gandalf? Um, so shout out to him too. Um, what, what's one of the stories that stands out to you as one of the must-reads that really embodies the, the energy that, you, that you're trying to transmit through this book? Well, there's, there's one that's uh, really kind of cute, and I'm trying to pick, and pick it up here so I can read it to you. Um, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> <laughs> we, need, we need interim music. Why am I having so da, 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 da. You do that, and I'll do the jazz yeah. hands. Razz of jazz. The, the um, one, that I, that I, one that I really, really wanted to, uh, oh, here, yes. The one that I really wanted to, and I wanted to read it because it's so amazing. As I mentioned earlier, that dreams that change our lives, they, they start from childhood. This one char started when this child was six years old and she dreamed of the moment she became conscious in this world. And let me read this to you. Mm. This was a six-year-old, and this was the moment she says she transitioned to the vivid sensory reality around her. She said, I perceived for the first time the world around me, the sky above, the rustling leaves, the summer heat, the breeze, the various sounds and smells of the garden. She said, I realized that I have lost a previous state where everything was one and all-encompassing, a sort of universal consciousness and existence, which I hold as the recollection of something I experienced, but that I now know and have forgotten. So isn't that amazing? <laughs> That wasn't written by a six-year-old. No, it wasn't. She's, she's a teen now or something like that, a little older. But this was a dream she had when she was six-year-old of the, the moment she became conscious in this world. She was laying, she was, a, she was an infant and her mother laid her out on the, on the grass, you know, in her grandmother's yard. And she, at first, she really sensed the world around her and then forgot this universal consciousness that she had just come from. Oh my God. The, that is it, so beautiful. Isn't and that amazing? It's amazing. And, you know, I think there's a part of me that wants to say, oh, how sad that she knew she was letting go of it. But at the same time, that's, it's the hide and seek of this, this dimension. We come in with all of it and then we deliberately, I think, 
parse it out. And kind of like Easter, we just, you know, if somebody's watching this in real time or close to real time, we just celebrated Easter a couple of days ago. And, you know, we hide the Easter eggs. We, we hide things so that we can find them and be so pleased and delighted when we find something. We can't find something that isn't already ours, really, but, you know, we are part of the hiding of things. So I, the, this innocent perspective makes that all the more clear. You know, it's, it's okay that, that she's going to lose that connection because we know she's going to get it back and she must have gotten it back if she was able to, or get, getting it back to some degree, if she was able to comment on that. Exactly. And then, um, you know, I, I had one myself that was in this book uh, from my early childhood. Oh. And I had, um, I, I, I think I was probably maybe eight. Yeah, in fact, I was eight years old. And I, I, you know how you dream at that time about, you know, witches or monsters or yes. things? Yes. Or yes. that you can't move, you're running yes. and you can't move. Well, I had a lot of those running and can't move dreams. And this one in particular would come, it was recurrent, it would, and it would be a storm in the, so, in the sky, this horrible storm company. I was out playing with all my friends, and they all ran home, but I couldn't run. I couldn't get home. I couldn't run. And it would, every night, this, this, well, every few nights, I'd have this nightmare again of this storm coming. And finally, I decided I'm going to turn around and look at the storm because I can't run. So I turned around and I looked at the storm and the more I stared at the storm, all of a sudden colors started forming in the clouds. And pretty soon, and the next time I'd have the dream, I'd just stare at the storm and I'd sort of force or make the colors come. And it became so exciting that after that, I wanted the storm dream to come. So I, it was, you know, I had become, I learned to become lucid and I learned that at that moment, the dreams were not just something strange happening in your head, but you were a part of the dream and you could affect it and it could affect you and it could affect your life. And it was the thing that got me into dream work. Oh. That, that was the moment I, I, I changed. So I can so picture young Bob having that revelation. <laughs> I love, I love that. And I just want to put a little pin in that because I was just talking about this with somebody the other day that has really, really scary dreams. And I was saying one of the payoffs of having a scary dream is that you know you're dreaming when you have it. It gets your attention. So this could be the prompt to lucid dreaming and your prompt to make a plan for what you're going to do differently in it. And I mean, this could be your wake up. There's a guy who had the most scary dream of a guy chasing him with a gun and it was recurring. And he, and he told himself, next time I'm going to do something different instead of running and waking up scared. And he he said, he just stared at the guy and said, okay, shoot me. Let's see what happens. And the guy shot him and it was a rubber bullet. It bounced off of him. And the, the gunman shot him again and again and again. And it just kept bouncing off of him. And he thought, oh my God, I feel like Superman. I'm invincible. You can't kill me. And the, the gunman looks at him and instead of his gun being like this, he, he gives him a thumbs up and a wink and, and leaves. Oh, isn't that great? And from that moment forward, the guy with the recurring dream became lucid, a very lucid dreamer similar to you. So I think that's one, one thing that we can use our nightmares for and to turn it into really look at it differently and then use it to become lucid. Bravo. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And there, it was a, um, the, the other thing is, as you get, um, as you move through life, your dreams start affecting uh, career changes, things of that sort. Uh, we found a number of people uh, completely changed their, their careers based on their dreams. There was one woman that um, she was in a business career and she uh, wasn't necessarily very happy in it, but it was, you know, good for her financially and things of that sort. Mm -hmm. But one night, and, and she, was, she got a promotion. She got a promotion. She had to make a decision whether she wanted to take this promotion and continue with this career and all. Sounded good. But that night she had this dream where she was putting these cold, dead babies into a grave. Oh, God. All these little blue, cold, dead babies in the grave. And it was, it was devastating to her. And she woke up realizing that these were parts of herself that she was 
burying. She was putting into the grave by continuing with this career choice she had made um, mm. that was not satisfying to her. So she immediately changed careers as a result of that. And that is now doing counseling and things of that sort, which are more along the lines of what she wanted to do. So these are the, these are the kinds of, of dreams we run into. And um, there was another that uh, sometimes the dreams are so powerful, they, they basically show us that we do have this internal power. Sort of like my dream with the colored clouds. I felt that I, yeah. all of a sudden I had an in, some internal power. Um, this one occurred with a, um, a fellow who was sent off to a boarding school. And uh, assuming he was in his teen years and his parents sent him off to a boarding school, he said, I felt totally banished, imprisoned, and, deep, and deeply depressed. He went into this huge depressed depression. And he said, in the middle of this depression, he said, I dreamed of an immensely huge sun, which rose over the high horizon, covering the whole sky. In spite of its overwhelming power, size, and strength, it was not frightening at all, but very reassuring. I felt safe and secure. He said, I woke up very up in a very uplifted mood, which remained, and my depression was gone. He said, I was deeply impressed by this extremely powerful dream and realized an incredible source of strength and meaning can be found within me. So oh. you know, here was, uh, you, you can call that the self, we can call it the higher self, the spirit, this, this power that's within us. These um, dreams, these big dreams, uh, show us that power and that we really can control and command our own life. Uh, and another layer is, I mean, so far what you've shared, you, your dream, the dark storm chasing you and not being able to run, how terrifying that is. And then this guy going through such a difficult time. And it's like sometimes these great revelations, whether they come in a dream or come in waking life, they they happen sometimes in within the dark night of the soul it's i think yeah. it's a really life affirming message as well Are, i wonder if there's any dreams that are just just happy dreams that just well I'm actually, sure there's some the um one of the messages that we tried to get across in the book too uh and i put one sequence in there i, I think i shared some of that sequence on one of your shows uh with the girl i worked with for about 18 months um, and she, the, her whole dream series started out with a really big dream where she went down into this uh, castle-like structure and met Carl Jung, who sent her off onto a journey through life. And all. But during that 18-month period, uh, she had multiple big, or some people might just call them happy dreams, moderate dreams. But each one guided her along this path. Every dream was a learning experience. No dream was wasted on just frivolity. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the real message here is all your dreams are big dreams. They're all guiding you. You're learning in the dream itself. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're a changed a little bit in the morning uh, the, in, the, in the dream. Mm -hmm. You become yeah. a different person. Right. It seems that some dreams, the, the ones that change our lives, can be, they can have a residual and over time, deeper value, like they can grow on you, um, you know, and like they maybe even at the time, they don't seem like such a big deal. But as you develop and you d dive deeper into them, more and more is revealed. I, I was just um, sharing yesterday on a, a podcast that I was invited on, a dream that I've never shared publicly, but it was a dream that I had about somebody somebody's child died and it was a client of mine and it was a really difficult time and it was the father of the son that passed away and I had had a session with him the day before and that night I dreamt and it didn't feel like a dream at all it felt like I was receiving dictation from the young man on the other side wow. and he was saying kind of like give this message to my dad and I got up in the middle of the night and I wrote while I was still in this dream state, I wrote about five pages of barely legible writing um, that was basically saying, you're still my dad. You're still important to me. When people tell you to get over this, it's not about disconnecting from me. It's just about disconnecting from the place that we 
that we knew each other, but reconnecting in this other place. I'm still here, but I'm different. We can still be connected, but we just, it's up to you. The ball's in your court. I can only come down so far to meet you, but you must find me in this oh, higher wonderful. place. Yeah. Well, the, a couple of the last chapters in this book get kind of amazing because it's a section of the book called Journey's End and Beyond. Because the dreams we received and put into those chapters basically not only illustrate, they, they talk about mourning and dreams, people who miss the passing of a loved one, but then later that loved one came in a dream and just hugged the heck out of them and they, they got to say goodbye which was wonderful. Uh, but here's one that is, I, you know, it, it, it astounds me every time I read it. Um, this one occurred on 9-11. -1 uh, and th this woman dreamed of her husband who had died exactly one year earlier of, of the date of 9-11. And in the dream, he appeared, and, and she said it was, it was very lucid. It was real. It was more than a dream. She said he appeared young and radiant. Uh, he was helping the people who had died in the World Trade Center. And so she turned to him and asked, she says, are they okay? To which he responded, they're fine. Once they're out, they're fine. Meaning once they're out in spirit, they're fine. Isn't that amazing? Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. The, a completely different perspective. Yeah, the, right. Those of us that are here on this side, we tend to freeze in time the moment somebody dies, if they're suffering, and, the, and we tend to think of them in that state years later, when really that was just one moment, and that moment's gone, and they're in a different plane, and they're doing great. They're like, hello don't remember me as that sick and dying person or however I was at the moment of my death yeah. or, or with a building that's burning down. It's like, that's, that was then. And now things have moved on. Catch up people. Don't be I so know. dense. Uh, like, they, they appear in dream after dream uh, in this book and not only that, but in the book uh, you did, um, the, we, we kind the of chickens. did together, the chicken. Yes, soup, we did. Chicken uh, soup for the soul. Dreams uh, and premonitions. It was dream after dream of, of people um, vi visiting uh, after yeah. they passed to uh, console their loved ones. And it particularly, some of the more touching one is when the grandmother comes back yeah. and says, I'm here, you've done well, uh, and encourages, you know, the loved one, the young one uh, to, to go on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's so... Mm. Yeah. I can't get enough of those. Yeah. Or the girl in that, in that book, in the Chicken Soup for the Soul book, um, Dreams and Premonitions, the woman who, who's having a really hard time in her life, she can't, she's, she's a struggling actress and she can't get a job and she's having a hard time paying her bills. She can't keep a relationship to save her life. And her best friend who had passed on a couple years before comes to her in the dream and she says, oh, there you are. Let me tell you all that's going on in my life. And she is at a table and she's telling her friend about her horrible life. And then her friend finally looks at her after having listened and she slams her fist down on the table and says, but you're still alive. Oh, wow. And the woman says, oh my God, I'm telling all these woes and worries to, to a dead person who's no longer here. I am still alive. I, I still, I can do something about this. She woke up from that dream and everything began to change. She, she started teaching. She started, to, she started to take some control and stopped her pity party. And within no time, she got into a good relationship and just developed a life that she was proud of. And it was that dream was the catalyst for her to oh, remember, that, oh, yeah, I'm still here. I can do something about this. Exactly. Yeah. And um, the, the message that most of these visitations, the person who visits, gives is that I'm still here, <laughs> you know, and, you know, so, and, I, and I'm doing fine and you shouldn't, uh, you shouldn't pine for me. Don't cry for me, Argentina. For me. You know, one of my favorite books in A Chicken Soup for the Soul, Dreams and Premonitions is your story, Bob. Corporate executives have dreams too. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love your story, and I think about it all the time, especially when I hear the song by Train, Calling All Angels. For those who don't know your story, would you be willing to yeah, I'll, sort I'll, of I'll recount tell, that? I'll tell that briefly, and uh, then I have another one to share, too. Yes, about, uh, yes. Uh, uh, going beyond life. But, uh, yeah, in mine, one, one of the things we, we – trying to get across in this book is that this whole thing about big dreams in our life's journey is all about learning. And life and the dream is all one. We like to tend to think of the dream being something separate, but it really, life and the dream is one big giant learning experience. And uh, I learned that in this particular dream that Kelly's talking about. I had, uh, I've always been working with dreams, but I had a, had a real life that paid my, my salary as a corporate executive. And I uh, was able to finally retire early and do this full time now. But the um, uh, one time, they, it was an American Express, and the uh, company was going through major uh, changes, and they were really redoing all the divisions. And the, my boss basically came to me and said, uh, you know, we, we're going to downsize your particular division. And it was one of these deals where if I wanted to stay, my job was going to be to basically fire my staff and downsize it and all that. And I just didn't want any part of that. And there was another position in the company open to me, but it was just miserable. So I was, I was miserable. I was looking around for positions open in the, in the rest of the company that, that would be satisfying to me. And it was just, and I, even though I had all kinds of opportunities to leave, in fact, I'd been invited to, to eventually go to IBM. I, I turned it down, and because I didn't want to leave, I was afraid of I'd lose my uh, retirement package and all this kind of change, you know, all these weird fears you have. Well, I had a dream one night that I was in this uh, boat under, in an underground river in an ice cave, uh, just, uh, you know, sitting there aimlessly going down this river, looking for a position in the windows that would get me out of this situation, you know. So that was a, just a metaphor for what I was in. And suddenly I heard this voice behind me. Um, it was like a, a tour guide or somebody back there that says, you can walk out the door. And the one thing I was resisting, of course, in this situation of waking life is just walking out the door because I'd lose all these my retirement package. I didn't know what it was going to bring me in, et cetera. And I was 55 years old at the time. So, um, so I argued with this voice. And it finally kept pointing, and suddenly a door appeared in front of the boat. And so I said, oh, okay, well, I'll try. And so I walked out the, to the front of the boat, and all of a sudden the boat came out of the ice cave onto this beautiful river, a just beautiful sunshining day with all these beautiful songs. There were songs in the air and things of that sort. And, uh, I, and so the, the, when I woke up that morning, I... Uh, I was a changed person because, uh, and on the way to work that morning, I uh, uh, was listening to the, the radio and on came this song calling all angels. And I started singing along with the song calling all angels as if it were like a prayer. And all of a sudden I had this weird sense, which maybe you've gotten sometimes, I hope that something changed, something really changed in the whole universe. So and I had turned down this IBM job earlier, and uh, so. But I get in. I get into work, and I'm sitting there, going, you know, I really can walk out the door. And all of a sudden, the phone rings, and it was the search firm for IBM saying, "We don't want your boss because I had given him my boss name to go after. We want you." And we'll be there tomorrow to interview you. <laughs> so long story short, after I got through some obligations I needed with, uh, with my present company, I walked out the door. And it, and it was lush and it was beautiful and it was no yeah. longer an ice cave. Absolutely. What it did was, was IBM became so, so strong after that point in time that, that uh, you know, I was able to retire early and do my dream work. So, you know, it was a, like winning the lotto. It was, it was really great. And the thing was, I learned in the dream. And that's the important thing. The learning occurred in the dream. I actually listened to the voice in the dream. I walked out the door in the dream and it rewarded me for it. Right. That rewarding process that dreams do is where it changes your life. Change actually happens in the dream. I didn't reflect on this dream until well after 
you know, I had made the decision. Then I went back and started looking. I said, you know, it was all there. Mm. So, uh, mm. yeah. So, I love that. I'll often, I often refer to that when there's these, it's almost like these three acts. There's like the problem and then there's the what you do about it. And then if you get it right, there's often this payoff. There's the lottery, there's yeah. the something. And you, and I, 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 I have such a very vivid um, image in my mind. I feel like I've had, it is a, not just an if it were my dream, it has become my dream. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the, the one thing you'll notice about these life-changing dreams, and 70% of them in this book, Dreams That Change Our Life, had this. It had what Jung called compensation. It, yes. uh, the dream, we get ourselves stuck in life because we believe a certain way, like in my dream. I believed that, you know, I was going to lose all my package and I was too old to change and all this kind of jazz. We, the dream brings in an opposing scenario. It compensates for your misconceptions. Right. That, and if you, in the dream, make the decision to follow that guidance, the change will occur. And what happened, I argued and argued in the dream with this voice, but finally I decided to walk out the door in the dream. And so the, the dream was basically saying, you can walk out the door, you know? Mm. It's it, so great it, when you've got a printout like that, when you've got a clear yeah. statement, Early, I can walk out the door. And this, this sequence of presenting the problem as a metaphor, bringing in an opposing scenario to your misconceived beliefs, and then rewarding you if you follow the dream within the dream is the common way dreams learn. Mm. And 70% of the dreams in this book have that sequence in them. It's pretty amazing. Right. Well, and I know this is what you're going to be sharing about. And I know there's other stories that you'll, that you'll use. Is there anything else that you, um, we're not going to give any more away about what you'll talk about, but is there anything else you can kind of tease about what, what's, what people can look forward to when they come and see you speak at this year's International Association for the City well, of Dreams Conference? One of the things that um, I'm, I'm going to have fun doing, it, you know, I, we all like lucid dreaming. This year, I'm getting together with Robert Wagner and Ed Kellogg. Ooh. Uh, we're going to present a, it's, it's going to be a, a symposium and panel. So there can be some sharing with the, the group around us on all the aspects of lucid dreaming. I'll present the science and psychology of lucid dreaming. Mm. Uh, Robert Wagner will be speaking on the lucid dreaming experience and getting into consciousness and various levels of consciousness that you can touch when you're in a lucid dream. And uh, Ed Kellogg has had some of the most amazing experiences, including self-healing in dreams, healing others in dreams, things of that in these lucid dreams. So that to me is my most exciting presentation at the, at the conference. Oh, um, but that sounds there'll, wonderful. There, there'll be many, many more uh, that are just as exciting. That all of a Saturday, you know, a good quarter of the um, uh, presentations on Saturday are going to be on spiritual and mm. uh, topics mm. uh, in dreams, uh, the whole spiritual section. So that's a day you don't want to miss. Um, you can actually pay for just one day of the conference if, if you want to. Um, and if you pay for Saturday, you get Friday night too. Mm. But uh, so, so it, it's definitely going to be an experience, I think, for anybody who comes. It will be very, very rewarding. Mm. And I'm looking forward to, I was just talking to Joan Galfand. I'm going to be presenting with her on yeah. dreams that, um, how you can use your dreams to source your creativity. And um, we'll be doing an actual workshop on that. And I'll be talking about dream goddesses and dreaming through with goddess glasses. So that should be, that should be fun. Um, you said there was one more story yeah, you that you'd like to share. The conference, I think, with yours. You're one of the very first presenters with your dream, dream goddess thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's we'll start it with special, goddesses. That, that's a good way to slot. start. <laughs> in a special slot. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm very excited. So is there, is there any last thought that you'd like to leave people with any last story about dreams that change our lives? Or yeah, There is one story, which... Yes. Just, it always warms my heart. I always like to think that that this this life is not the only life, and that this learning experience and journey doesn't end when we die. It just continues. Mm. This this was one was was very very heartwarming. Um, it was a woman named Victoria, and her father had died when she was very little, 
and uh, in this in this dream, he appears, and he appears somewhat young, like you know we've we've talked about before when we get these visitations. It was definitely him, and he says, "I'm coming back," and she says. You're, you're coming back. You're coming back from France or something. She remembered it. he was in France when she was. She says, he says, no, I'm coming back from death. And he was all happy and hugged her. And, you know, this is a big celebration. I'm coming back. And uh, they were in, in the dream. She was in a place that looked like an orphanage in the dream. And the next day after the dream, her brother called to tell her that they had were at the adoption center and they were granted the adoption of a three month year old boy or three month old boy. <laughs> so circumstance maybe, but I like to kind of think he was coming back. Oh, that <laughs> is so, that is so wonderful. I, you know, I, I believe it. I mean, if you think about being alive and all the all the all the things that it takes to keep us alive and who we are we are just filled with we are one we're a miracle machine yeah. so it's not far fetched to think that there's these spontaneous synchronistic happenings that tie on our dreams to our waking life so that yes. it's not far fetched at all we're yeah. hurling through space at i don't know hundreds of thousands or millions of miles an hour and why would we think anything strange? Here we are having this conversation. Exactly. And Bob Haas, I just have to tell you, I so appreciate you. I so appreciate your, you know, you, you do have this corporate executive background. And yet, I mean, you kind of represent the evolution of our species, the male aspect, because you really have that sensitive side that is incredibly advanced and developed spiritually. And yet, and you're very grounded. You pull off these incredible IASD conferences and you're very organized and you you really have the blend of both sides and and you're so generous in your sharing I've I've come to you with personal questions about dreams and I was sitting backstage in a green green room on Ricky Lake and they threw a spontaneous question to me about sleep paralysis and I'm like Bob I've got five minutes help and you yeah. just you're right there at the ready and I I, I, I was telling somebody the other day, when you go to an ISASD conference, you're going to meet people like Bob Haas. You're, and the, all of the people that you meet, you're going to love. These are, this is a real tribe of people that come from the heart and the soul and, and they're intelligent and they care and they're on the evolutionary edge. And you are a wonderful representation of, of who people can expect to meet and be inspired by when they go to the IASD conference. Thanks, Kelly. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that a lot. But thank you for joining me today on I on on Dreams Unzipped for unzipping some of these dreams that change our lives. I can't wait to hold this book in my hands. It's so beautiful. <laughs> and you've been working on this for so long. This has been, you know, sometimes you dream and incubate things for a while, but if you stick with it, eventually they become manifest. And this is an exciting time. So everybody, make sure you go. If you haven't already bought your ticket yet, go to As Dreams. Dot org and buy your tickets to the 34th annual dream conference at the Wyndham Anaheim in Garden Grove, Anaheim, California. Go to asdreams.org. And until we meet again, thanks for joining me here on Dreams Unzipped. And please don't take your dreams lying down. <laughs> Sweet dreams. Thank you. Mm -hmm.